This is Apostle Tanya. Most marvelously, we have the blessed honor in this generation to declare our love for our blessed master. And surely, I am most grateful to serve together with you to exalt our holy Lord and remindeth the enemy. The earth is thy Lord's and the fullness thereof. Through the revelatory teachings taught by the Spirit of God through me and the most glorious supernatural fun experiences that I have spent in the blessed presence of the Master. I pray that you shall be most encouraged and equipped listening to holy podcasts. <laughs> I am most surely honored to have you a part of the family. In the book of St. John, chapter 19, verse 23 and 24, we read a most agonizing text, whereby surely causeth tears for our blessed Master. In these most heart-wrenching verses that were recorded of our Lord's crucifixion, a most dramatic scene of theft and desecration against the Son of God tragically occurred at the cross. His Majesty's garment and robe worn humbly by him as he served in his ministry were torn and gambled for by four Roman soldiers. The scripture records that the soldiers tore the four parts of Yahshua's garments and that each part of his blessed garments were divided to each of the soldiers. It is surely most painful for us to read of our great sufferer's pain and suffering while the soldiers committed this criminal act against him. We might also ponder on what was the strategy from the Holy One of Israel when he allowed his only begotten garments to be wickedly torn and gambled for by these soldiers. Most certainly throughout this passage on the historical events of the death of our Savior, the Holy Spirit is most faithful to reveal the truth to us that although it was most surely the Father's will, the brutal crucifixion of the Savior of the world was fulfilled most horrifically, pardon me, as prophesied in the Old Testament. As we are most careful to study and examine the hearts of the soldiers, we may conclude that they were most jealous and wrathful. These men were clearly 
one, they were obviously and clearly lacking temperance. Consequently, in the Holy Scriptures, the Blessed One has given to us to study over 800 references of the heart. And one particular passage is recorded in Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 6. The wicked hearts of those soldiers, whom were indeed seemingly incited by their hatred and obvious intimidation of thy Lord's miracles and his teachings and his glorious fame, made a most tragic decision in their part of the blessed history of the Son of God. Perhaps it was a fleeting, terrible decision of the soldiers whereby resulted in their most merciless covenant to further disgrace and humiliate and shame Yeshua. Certainly, the public demonstration of their rejection of the Lordship of Yeshua revealed the hearts of men in the days of our beloved Lord, whom we should surely be most affrighted if they walked in any freedom in the earth today. The four soldiers' wickedness toward our Lord and their heart and hearts that refuse to show any measure of compassion to our Master surely reminded us of the ability of Satan to identify and use a willing heart for his kingdom to kill, still, and destroy. This the enemy inherently seeks to accomplish in his attempt to further advance his wicked plans in the earth. In the book of the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 9, we read a most marvelous scripture about the heart. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And so it surely was on that tragic day over 2,000 years ago when four men with the breath of God stood at the blessed cross of our beloved Savior and committed the most inconceivable theft and mockery against the Son of God. In their cowardice hearts, as heaven watched, the four names were possibly recorded in the book of heaven's court room. These words, 
the most brazen and wicked men who trespassed against the lowly king as his bleeding and unrecognizable body. His body was nailed to the cross for his children. 